Say good morning once again to our co-host, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Good, good morning, John. Good morning, Robert. I give you credit. During that break, you stayed in your chair the whole time. You didn't get up and switch chairs with anybody. Nobody had to readjust it. First I, I redid the pneumatic. Is it thing. still sinking on you? Well, a little bit. Huh? But, but. We're going to get your prop stick under there. Also, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Never moved. Great job, chair. Us. Yeah, you're happy with your seat. I love. I love it. It's perfect. I like a man who's happy with his chair. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at the head of the table. Yeah, how could right. how could I how could I not like it? If this was Thanksgiving dinner, I'd be carving you'd the turkey. Be cutting the, you'd be cutting the bird. Yeah. I cut, I cut cutting turkey. Yeah. So you always were a teacher's pet. No. Speaking of which, no. see, we <laughs> have a teacher. See, yeah, excelling uh, in the art of transition. Nice transition. Yeah. Our guest in this segment is the teacher of the year in Berkeley County, a 25 year veteran of teaching in the area, a Parkersburg High graduate, Rebecca Catlett, not related to Steve. By the way, good morning, Rebecca. How are you? Good morning. I'm great, and it's wonderful to be here. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. It's a tremendous honor. It's still sinking in. How did you wind up in Berkeley County? Um, I graduated from Glenville State College in 1998 with the intention of actually teaching in Wood County, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, however, the situation there was that the population was declining, and they were closing schools. And quite the opposite was happening here, even back in 1998. Uh, the population was growing here and they were looking for teachers and so i had five interviews in one day here in berkeley county and my first teaching job was in the fall of 1998 i started at martinsburg south middle school teaching special education students with behavior disorders and then where did you go from there um, from there um, i taught there for several years in special education and then i was a uh, special education coordinator for berkeley county schools for a year before moving to spring mills middle school I've been there for 16 years, I believe. Um, wow, again, Spring Mills Middle has been open 16 years. Yeah, and um, I was, I think, it, I think it's been that long. And I may be wrong about the math. And then I taught special ed there for um, quite some time and Read 180, a mm -hmm. reading intervention program. And then three years ago, I started teaching English language learners, students learning English as a second or third or fourth, or in one case, even a fifth language. Wow, and mm -hmm. you do that at Spring Mills Middle and the high school? Yes, I work at both schools. And how many students do you have all told? Um, all together, I have a little more than 50 students uh, between the two schools. 50, okay, very mm -hmm. good. So uh, how did you find out you were Teacher of the Year? Um, so <laughs> first you're nominated by your staff members, by your colleagues, and then you fill out an application. And the application is quite lengthy and you turn in your application and then you wait. And then um, I was notified that I was a top five finalist. Mm -hmm. The top five finalists go through an interview process and then you wait again. <laughs> and then last Monday night at the board meeting, they announced the winner. They, they recognized all five of the top five finalists and then they named the winner. What was your reaction? Uh, I was in shock and quite, quite honored. Yeah, when they called my name, I was very shocked. What does it mean to you to win this award? Oh, it means so much to me to win this award, not just for me, but for my students. It means a lot to me for my students too, that I win this award because they work very, very hard. So I feel like they share this with me. Mr. Gilstrap. You mentioned there's a, a, there's a nomination, then there's a application, is that what you used? Or, yes. Okay, so is the, the application like a, a a resume, a CV, or is it why I should be teacher of the year? So it's a little bit, but it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, there is a CV, a resume uh, that's part of the application process, but they also ask you some questions. Um, for example, one of the questions on the application was describe a time that you've grown as a teacher. Uh, you also describe a unit that exemplifies who you are as a teacher. Um, so there are questions about your teaching as well as your resume. There must be a moment or two, and yes, I'm going to ask you to tell it, um, <laughs> where there's an interaction with a student or the growth of a student or whatever is that moment where you realize, wow, I am really glad I do what I do. Because yeah. I'm sure there are a few days where, why did I choose this as a profession? Right? Mm -hmm. there, there, there are bad days. What are some of the, what's, what's a really, one of those great moments? Um, I think a moment that stands out for me was a student that um, used to get in a lot of trouble. He used to settle a lot of his um, issues with his fists. He get, would get into fights. Mm -hmm. um, he was always in trouble with teachers. And then he was placed in my classroom, and um, I just formed a connection and a bond with him. And I saw past this hard exterior 
to a student that was just struggling academically. And so I tried to connect with him and I just kept encouraging him every day to come to school and, and try. And his reading skills improved a lot. His writing skills improved a lot. Uh, his ability to speak English improved a lot. And um, everything turned around for him. He stopped getting into fights. His attendance was better. Um, he was flourishing in his classes and um, told me, I'm going to be the first, the first person in my family to graduate from high school. Wow. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an awesome moment. And you helped make that happen. I did, and, and some other teachers did too, and guidance counselors, and a lot of it takes a village. It certainly mm -hmm. does. Um, I don't want to take all the credit for his turnaround. Uh, there were a lot of people working with him and helping him, but we have that we have that power as a school system to change somebody's whole life, right? To um, start a new chapter for them that's better, and not just for them, but for their future children. That's true. You can yeah. turn around generations. You can. Right. Especially if you teach someone to read. Matt Harvey. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, really, really a tremendous honor. Um, what challenges do you have now in teaching that you didn't have when you started in 1998? In 1998, the internet was just beginning to be a thing, right? And in 1998, uh, I didn't have a, a single computer in my classroom. Uh, nobody did. We had one computer lab. Uh, in the in the entire school, and about the only thing your students could do in that lab was uh, play Oregon Trail. I don't know if any of you are familiar. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the original, the yeah. original Oregon they, Trail. They could play Oregon Trail. They could type their spelling words. They could do word processing types of things. So, um, I would say far and away the biggest change has been the advent of technology, uh, because now technology impacts, affects, and I think supplements everything that we do in teaching. Uh, not only the, the instruction, but the student output as well. So just learning and keeping up, trying to keep up and learn all these technology tools and implement them in your classroom and finding that balance, because I'm still a traditionalist in many ways. So finding that balance between the use of technology and still having plenty of human interaction going on. Do you, do you see the uh, attention spans decreasing? with the rise of technology? Uh, not with all students. I don't see that with all students. I see, I've, I see um, um, as more of an issue, their ability to um, communicate effectively in person. Um, we have to teach that. Like we can't assume they have those skills. Right. So teaching that person-to-person -person communication, in-person oral communication, I think is super important. Uh, because in many cases, they would prefer to communicate via text. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy Cloud on our Facebook page sends her oh. congratulations. She was your hey. aide for a while. She was. She was fantastic. That's very sweet. Hi, Kathy. It's always nice when people reach out, right? It is. And that has been one of, for the last week and a half, that has been without a doubt the best part of this recognition is hearing from colleagues present and past and my students mm -hmm. um, past students students that i had 23 years ago uh, <laughs> reaching out and letting me have you taught any of your former students kids yet i have and that does make you feel <laughs> old <laughs> i have um, that happened to me a few years ago when a sixth grader walked into um, sixth grade orientation at, at spring mills middle school and i looked and realized you look just like another student I had a long time ago, my first year teaching. And then um, I asked him his name and he told me, and he happens to have the same name as his father. He's the junior version. Mm -hmm. And I immediately knew, and I asked him, you know, is so-and-so your dad? He said, yes. So that happened to me a few years ago. I have a sister-in-law who recently retired in the Pittsburgh area who was a middle school teacher. And, and one of the things that all middle school teachers have in common that doesn't get discussed in public too often is that you are the gateway to puberty. So you are also the gateway to the introduction of deodorant for boys. Yes. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it's, it's true. I mean, yes. that is very true. If you're a middle school teacher, you sometimes have to, um, in a very sensitive mm -hmm. way, you have to sometimes address hygiene issues, especially in the spring when the weather warms up and they're running around outside in <laughs> PE and at lunchtime and they come back. 
in the building and the yes. windows are closed <laughs> you sometimes have to address it yes yeah so that some things change over time that does not that change has not time. changed in 25 years that's no. always been the middle school teacher's <laughs> job that it, it, it is part yes how do you decide to become a teacher becky take me back mm -hmm. to your high school days and when this seed was first planted for you so I always, I think from the time I was in second grade, I had an amazing second grade teacher. Her name was Frances Zickerman, and she taught at Lincoln Elementary School in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and she was fantastic. And I wanted to be Mrs. Zickerman. <laughs> and I, so I think from second grade on, I knew I wanted to teach something. I wasn't sure in those early years what I wanted to teach. Um, and then in high school, I thought I wanted to be a first grade teacher. And then in college, as I did my practicum experience, my student teaching experience, I quickly realized I loved middle schoolers. And now I love high schoolers. Why, why did you quickly realize you love middle schoolers? They're, they're that perfect in between. I don't have to tie their shoes or- <laughs> Take wipe, them to the bathroom. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but they're, and they're just beginning to figure out who they are as people, like their belief systems, um, their, their strong opinions about life and where they fit into um, our society. All those things are just starting to bloom, and I love that about middle schoolers. So what's been the most rewarding part of your experience as a teacher? Student growth. Student growth, um, watching students grow in their academic skills, watching them grow socially, watching their confidence grow um, as they become adults. Uh, seeing them be successful, uh, whatever that is for them. Um, that's been the most rewarding part, the students. The students will always be the most rewarding part. Circling back to you, Mr. Gilstrap. In my experience, middle school, we had junior high when, when I was coming up, but that was the absolute worst time of my life for all of the reasons you say trying to figure out who you are. And plus, I was I was shipped off to a school that was you know miles and miles away. I think I have such admiration for anybody who can deal with middle schoolers. I, kids are kids, right? But that's their emotional firestorms at this point you, with, with the hormones. And, and there's also, <clears throat> do you find there's also the issue that by that age, the die is cast with who they are likely to be or who they think that they're going to become. So the ones who come from difficult backgrounds and maybe didn't have the benefit of great teachers in first, second, and third grade, or a great family, or you know, whatever the case may be, do you have to undo or try to undo a lot at the middle school level from, from what they bring from before? Does that even make sense? Your question makes sense. I don't feel that way. I, I definitely don't feel like I have to undo a lot from the primary or the intermediate schools. Um, I feel like sometimes you do have students that have those difficult backgrounds that you're talking about, uh, but I don't feel like I have to undo it. I just feel like every day is a new day. Every day you have a clean slate and every day is an opportunity to learn and to help students be the best they can be. So I try uh, really hard to um, see the good in every student uh, and to help them with their coping skills and their coping mechanisms to overcome those challenges that you're talking about. We can't ignore uh, the challenges that they arrive with, but we can help students overcome those hurdles. We hear a lot on this program about disciplinary issues in, in schools, Berkeley County, but across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, have you found that to be an issue, not necessarily in your own classroom, but in, in, in schools. And is there a magic button or a string that can be pulled to, to kind of solve these discipline related issues? What, how, wouldn't a magic button be miraculous? Well, so, yeah. There's no magic button. You are but... teacher of the year. I mean, <laughs> can that come with a button? I don't have any magic <laughs> buttons. Uh, we don't have a magic button, but what we do have, we have policies, we have procedures, and we have to have the flexibility uh, to uh, look at our systems, our policies and procedures, to evaluate them. We need to be in a constant state of reflection. What's going well? What's not going well? And be willing to uh, change when we need to. All the while having high expectations. That's incredibly important. I think um, the best discipline starts with high expectations. Again, I'm a traditionalist. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, uh, so I'm curious, what comes next? I, 
w- w- traditionally wasn't the teacher year automatic didn't you automatically participate in leadership berkeley so what comes next for me is application for west virginia state teacher of the year so i've been working on my application this week and plan to submit it tomorrow um so that's what's next in terms of the teacher of the year recognition um i'll submit that to the state uh, and then I think what's also next for me is I really want to work to promote and highlight the amazing things that are happening across our district in schools. We have thousands of employees in Berkeley County Schools that are doing amazing things for students and their families, and I just want so much to highlight those amazing things that are happening. I was excited to hear that Ms. Beal will um, be here next week from Spring Mills High School to talk about her um, forensic science class, and I think that's one example of many of just uh, fantastic teachers that are doing great things, and I'd like to highlight those things. So I think that's next for me too. Rebecca Catlett is our guest. She is the Berkeley County Schools Teacher of the Year Award winner. And next, as she said, she'll move on to apply for the State Teacher of the Year Award. When do they announce that, Rebecca? I'm not sure the exact date that that will be announced. I believe it's in June. June. But I'm not positive about the exact date that it will be announced. We've heard over the last, especially since COVID, the last couple of years about teacher burnout. So many teachers are retiring, have have left uh, the school system maybe earlier than they, they initially planned. Two, you don't seem like you're suffering from burnout. You seem to be as happy, vibrant, and smiley as anybody that I've met out of the school system ever. Um, well, I, a piece of advice I give to new teachers, first-year teachers, is take care of yourself. And the things that you do outside of school that make your heart sore, continue to do those things, too. Um, again, we talked earlier about, I was talking earlier about that balance between technology and um person in-person communication in the classroom i think teaching is also a balance you have to have this balance in your life of work and family and um, things that again that you personally are interested in and so i think that helps me not be burnt out Mm -hmm. i think any teacher will tell you that you get exhausted sometimes Uh, teaching is hard and to be honest it can be exhausting but Um, I feel like one of the ways you avoid burnout is you continue to do those things uh, outside of school that fill you up. Um, So for example, for me, that's, I'm a huge West Virginia waterfall enthusiast. Mm. I love going to West Virginia waterfalls, camping, adventuring. And so I still make time to do those things. All right. What's the prettiest part of the state? Where do you enjoy going to the most? That is so hard to answer. Um, I, I, throw a couple in there. You, okay. Be one. Okay. I love Mercer County. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I love that entire area. Um, I think the Eastern Panhandle is beautiful. Um, I love the central part of the state too. Um, Glenville, uh, Gilmer County, Lewis County. I think it's beautiful. It's so hard though. Like I would have to just say the whole thing is beautiful. So Matt, <laughs> what, what county are you from? What, where'd you grow up? Monroe. Monroe. Which was she almost Which, got. which is adjacent to Mercer County. Yes, yeah. and it has Moncove Lake, correct? Very good. Yes, it's a beautiful place. And the the Raptor Observatory. I've been there. I just went this past summer. What'd you think? Oh, what a, it was. How did you pick Mercer over Monroe? I love Mercer <laughs> County, but how did you, after going to the Raptor Observatory, which you can see well, Mercer County from from there, <laughs> he's how, fired could up. Pick, how could you pick? Well, like, how could you fired pick up. Mercer over Monroe? Okay. Well, have have you been to Campbell's Creek or Campbell's or Camp Creek? Excuse me. Have you been to Camp Creek State Park and seen Campbell's yes. Falls? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. My dad so, goes there like every day. So fishing. Camp, Campbell's Falls is my favorite waterfall in the entire. I was going to ask you what your favorite waterfall. That's my favorite waterfall in the entire state. Well, have you been to the Cascades? It's in Virginia. I have not. But it's right. It's close. It's, it's right on the border, correct? Yes. I, I haven't. It's on my bucket list. It's 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 a. It's good. Okay. It's good. You'll enjoy it. I will be sure to check it out. This is like West Virginia geography, B. I like it. I know. I was like, I play Salmon Road. Please Salmon She said Mercer. I'm like, Mer- Mercer's a great county. I like Mercer. Mm-hmm. But it's not Monroe. <laughs> they're, both, they're both wonderful. They are. I've been to both. And they it's are, my home. They so are both wonderful. I've got to be, you know, I, I'm jealous about that. <laughs> you could be Monroe Chamber of Commerce when you're done with this whole prosecuting attorney thing. Yeah. Office of One. Right. They don't have one now, sir. They don't have a stoplight. Well, you know, In the whole county. One day when you need so one, you'll get one. Well, you, but you will agree that Berkeley County is better than Jefferson County. 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jefferson County is a fantastic county. She gave a very good political answer. Yeah. She picked a couple regions. She said something for each region, and then she said mm-hmm. the whole thing. That was very clever. But, but, I, I, tru- but I do truly believe that. I know my, you do. My, I know you do. My sister and I, we take a West Virginia adventure trip every summer, and we make a loop around the state, uh, yeah. very seldom visiting the same place twice. That's great. And so I've seen a lot of West Virginia, and... I think it's all, right. all beautiful. What like do you I have truly to do. What do you, if you ever listen to this program and you haven't toured a lot of the state, maybe you just moved here from mm-hmm. another state, which a lot of people do lately, mm-hmm. what do you have to see? What would you tell them? Where, where do you have to go? You have to go do the bridge walk. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. I, I would never do it. Why are you afraid? I'm, I'm very much scared of heights. Are you? I'm terrified. Like, I, oh, you're totally tethered in. It's very, very. I don't safe. care. It's tethered like tethered in. What kind of bridge is this? Uh, <laughs> the, new, the New River Gorge. It's a plank. Oh no way! What no is it way. about a plank? About two feet wide. Yes. And you're walking across it, and it's 800 feet down. Mm-hmm. And there's like these wire guide guide wires that you can hold on to, and you are tethered in. Yeah. If it was, and, if it was dangerous, amazing. they wouldn't let you. I think do I it. might faint. And it's amazing. It's at the New River Gorge. Mm-hmm. So I would say you definitely should do the bridge walk at the New River Gorge for okay. sure. I think you should go to the Falls of Hills Creek. Uh, that's a series of three falls. Um, Where's that? It is an experience. You'll have to forgive me. I cannot remember which county that was in. Um, it is in the southeastern part of the state. I know somebody on our Facebook page is going to pop that in there. In yes. A what, um, what was the falls? Falls of Hills Creek. It is an experience. It's a series of three waterfalls. Um, so I definitely suggest visiting that. Uh, Camp Creek State Park, um, any of the state parks, they're all fabulous. All right, so Brad Knoll said you should visit Whitaker Falls on Randolph-Webster border. I've been there. That's yeah. a lesser-known falls that is um, highly underrated. It's great. You are the falls guide. So that's something that makes my heart sore, right? Mm-hmm. So when I'm feeling burnt out as a teacher, when I start feeling that burnout creep in, I know I need to get outside and go adventuring. And so your question was about teacher burnout and Absolutely. how do we prevent it? We have to take care of ourselves as teachers. So you've been doing this 25 years. How much longer? Um, I see at least eight years in my future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, six to eight. And... Um, I don't want to take you outside of a comfort zone or whatever, okay. but if you had a message to the West Virginia legislature or administration in Berkeley County, what would you tell them about helping young teachers get started mm-hmm. or experienced teachers stick around and be retained? Well, the first message I would have for them is always put students first. If every decision we make is about students, every decision we make will be right. That's what I would share with them. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey, congratulations again. Thank you so much. It was an, it's an honor to be Berkeley County Teacher of the Year, and I appreciate um, this opportunity to speak. I hope you get named State Teacher of the Year, too. Oh, thank you. And, and is there like a National Teacher of the Year you go on to after State? I believe so, yes. All right. Well, and and I, think, I, th- I think they announced the finalists in June. I think I may have misspoke earlier. I think they announced the finalists in June. I think it's later that they announced the actual winner. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. Rebecca Catlett, Berkeley County Schools Teacher of the Year for 2023.